Hello everybody, Dr. Carp here and welcome to my channel where my goal is for you to become your own authority in health so you can make the right decisions for you and your family about your health. And today we're going to be discussing the top five keto mistakes that I see in my patients and my online clients. So let's just jump right into it. My goal for this particular video is for you to understand these top five mistakes if it's something that you're interested in in terms of the keto diet. The keto diet can be a very unhealthy diet very, very profoundly unhealthy diet if it's not done properly and you're not in ketosis and you're consuming the wrong things. And we'll hopefully by the end of this, and that's my goal, is for you to understand these mistakes in a deep way and provide you with resources so that you know what to do next. I always endeavor in these videos for you to use this as sort of a launching pad for you to become your own authority, which is the goal of this channel. So let's jump right into it with number one through three. The first one is, number one, you've never read a keto book. If I have a patient that comes in who says that they're on the keto diet after filling out the questionnaire, and I ask them, which books have you read? If they say that they've read none, almost always, and I'm talking greater than 90% of the time, they are not in ketosis. And that's profound because if you are eating what you think is a keto diet or what the general conception of a keto diet is and you're not in ketosis, that can be a profoundly unhealthy circumstance. So let's uh, talk a little bit about this particular one. Well, why is it important? Because you know, you should become your own authority, which is the goal of this particular channel and you need to find a trusted source. There are many trusted sources out there. That's not particularly the goal of this particular video. However, I will say that uh, The Plant Paradox, Chapter 10 of Stephen Gundry's book is really excellent because he has a really amazing grasp on why protein is a potentially huge problem for people in general when it comes to, to overall health because we'll get to, into it in just a moment, but increasing animal protein has been associated with decreased longevity, decreasing the length of your life. And in his uh, third book, I believe, which is called The Longevity Diet, goes into the dangers of animal protein in a much deeper way. But in The Plant Paradox, he really spends this particular chapter, I believe it's chapter 10, in The Plant Paradox, goes through even how to do a vegan keto diet. And I, I just find this particular chapter chapter and the book in general, I know it's gotten a lot of, it's it's been somewhat of a controversial book, but I know Dr. Gundry personally, I've spent time in his office, which was really, really fabulous for, for my overall education, and I recommend that book and chapter 10 to understand the keto diet. Fat for Fuel by Dr. Joseph Mercola is also quite a good book. There are many, many books I could, could include here. I just happened to put these in. They, they came to mind, and they are books that, that I recommend for people who are interested in, in thinking about the keto diet. But it's not such a simple thing. You really do need to understand it profoundly, deeply, in a way that you could explain it to others. And uh, this is these are the, just two resources that I recommend. The second mistake is that you assume that protein and fat are the same when it comes to ketosis. You have to understand that protein, first of all, in your diet, you're not, you're not really capable of storing all that much protein. Uh, in your in your body and when you don't need a huge amount of it believe it or not so when your body gets an excess amount of that then it has nowhere to store it so it gets basically gets converted into sugar which is obviously going to affect a ketogenic diet as well as the fact that as each day progresses each day that come goes by we're seeing more and more evidence showing that animal protein essentially shortens your life I recommend the book called The Longevity, uh, the Longevity Diet by Dr. Walter Longo, and I'm highly, I highly recommend that book. And also, going th doing a fasting mimicking diet on a periodic basis, which is uh, something he discusses in that book at length. I am actually on my going about to do my fifth fasting mimicking cycle myself. It's been the most profound intervention that I've done for my health overall in my life and it's something that I highly recommend to my patients. Um, if you'd like to find out if you are qualified for that, uh, sign up for a free consultation with me. Link will be 
down below and I'd be happy to guide you through a fasting mimicking diet as a way not only to uh, improve your health and decrease your weight if that's something, but also if you're interested in the keto diet and you want to dependably have a way of feeling what it feels like to be in a ketogenic state for three to five days, the fasting mimicking diet is just a really safe and profound way of understanding ketosis without necessarily starting a ketogenic diet. Uh, number three is relying on butter and cheese and meat. There's significant dangers to the toxins that come from conventional sources of butter, cheese, and meat. I mean, basically, your body, your body, and all animals store toxins in fat. So, there, so when you have sudden amount of weight loss, fat loss, people can get sick because they're releasing toxins that have been stored in their, in their fat. And when we test people's fat, there have been studies that test people's fat. I mean, the things that you see in there, like jet fuel as an example, just from breathing the fumes on a plane, you can, you can take a fat sample from somebody's body and analyze the fat. And you actually see, you can, you can see things like literally jet fuel. So you can imagine what happens if you have a lot, a lot of weight loss and you have a lot of stored toxins, you are going to generally, can generally feel sick. But let's switch over to what we're talking about here, which is animals, animal fats, butter, cheese, and the meat and fat are going to have an enormous amount of, of toxins, especially if you're buying run-of-the-mill meats and cheeses and butter from the store. This is dangerous. You can get significant amount of toxins. So if you're eating these things and you're relying on these things and you're just buying your run-of-the-mill store-bought stuff, you're getting exposed to a lot of toxins. Now, obviously, there are circumstances, right, where someone needs to lose weight a lot and maybe they can't afford to buy high quality butter and cheese and meat. Um, I believe there are lots of ways of losing weight and if you're in a circumstance again where you need to lose a lot of weight or you're trying to avoid weight loss surgery, sign up for a free consultation with me so we can talk about it and maybe there are maybe the ketogenic diet isn't for you. Um, we can talk about that on the phone. But relying on butter, cheese, and meat from conventional sources, it's just not safe. We have to concern ourselves with our overall health and not just focus specifically on metabolism. Uh, most people, there are a lot of experts in, the, in this movement that are so focal, focused on seeing things through the lens of metabolism that they forget about other aspects of your health that are not related to metabolism that can have profound effects on your overall health and the way you feel. Thinking number five, thinking that saturated fat is perfectly fine now that you are on a keto diet. In the keto community, there seems to be, and the paleo community, there seems to be this over uh, emphasis on maligning the science that has shown that saturated fat is dangerous. And while some of that criticism, some is valid, I would venture to say that the majority of it, I've got, obviously it depends on the person and what they're citing, and that would be subject for an entire video. But saturated fat uh, is, generally speaking, not good for you. And, um, but, but leave that where it is. Let's just say that it's not as dangerous as everyone's saying it is. Well, there are people with genetics that certainly shouldn't be consuming saturated fat, specifically people with an uh, ApoE4, they get huge spikes in LDL cholesterol with saturated fat. If you have this gene, then you shouldn't be eating high levels of saturated fat. Uh, I reference, I go back to Plant Paradox, chapter 10, where he has a, a very nice, I believe there's a nice chart in there for if you wanted to go vegan keto so you could avoid saturated fats overall saturated fats, uh, if you certainly could try a keto diet and get your LDL cholesterol checked, and if it spikes to a dangerous level, then lower your saturated fat intake and see what happens. A people with the ApoA2 gene have higher weight gain with saturated fat. If you're interested, uh, I test in my practice and online clients. I test 
People's Nutrigenome, uh, Nutrigenomics Panel to see if they have these genes, to see if uh, they should avoid saturated fats. You don't need saturated fats on a keto diet. And I would say, I recommend my patients, because saturated fat often runs with, not exclusively, but often runs with people's animal protein, um, I, I recommend that, and I'm obviously recommending that you don't consume an enormous amount of protein, that you avoid and try to limit your saturated fat intake. And, oh, that was number five, sorry, but we'll go down to number four. Not understanding chronically high insulin levels affect on ketone production. Basically, most of you know uh, you've heard of insulin. And when your insulin is high, you're not going to go into ketosis. And this high, these high insulin levels can prevent ketosis even at low carb levels, meaning you could cut your carbs way, way down. And you could even be avoiding um, you know, the protein that we mentioned and eating a high amount of fat. And yet, with chronically high levels of, of you know, insulin that, that are a result of years and years of, of bad eating, you may not go into ketosis for quite a while which can cause you to feel bad because you're on a low-carb diet. Uh, there, there are lots of things that I could discuss about symptomatically here, but let's focus on what we're talking about, that foods that raise insulin levels, you would probably think, well, carbs, of course, but foods that are what are so-called insulinogenic, meaning they increase your levels of insulin, cheese, eggs, steak, these things that, you, that people potentially rely on in it on a ketogenic diet are things that can raise insulin levels which going back here are going to prevent you from going into ketosis which is that fat burning state we need to sort of get rid of that fat if that's what you're interested in doing so if you don't understand this and you and this is something that if you don't understand and you're just eating meat and cheese and eggs and you're not testing I could say that the number Six thing is not 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 frequently enough. We're not testing whether you're in ketosis properly. Uh, there are plenty of people who say they're on the ketogenic diet. This happens to me all the time, and I ask them how they check their ketone levels, and they say, "Well, I don't check them. I just I just sort of know." Uh, again, big big bad thing about that is uh, just it's a bad thing. So getting back to this, insulinogenic foods, cheese. Is, is really hugely insulinogenic and eggs and, and steak can also cause animal protein can cause your insulin levels to spike so another reason why you need to really restrict not just for ketones but your overall health is in so important to reduce the amount of animal protein the fact that people are eating animal protein at every single meal is a is a perverse um, it's a perverse amount looking both at the history of humanity and just it's just gross to be eating animal meat every single meal of the day it's it's just uh, anyway I don't, <laughs> I'll stop there uh, let's talk about hyperinsulinemia which is high insulin levels and then we'll wrap up this video this short video well it increases heart disease it increases cancers it increases non-alcoholic liver disease. It increases kidney disease. Of course, it increases diabetes as well. So we want to control our insulin levels. I check insulin levels on my patients. You can even check, every time I mention labs, I always say you can check labs yourself now. There are ways of if your doctor doesn't want to do that, then you can check labs yourself. And you can even reach out to me, and I'd be happy to order. If you don't feel comfortable ordering it yourself, I'm happy uh, to order insulin levels, an insulin level for you so you can understand this at a deeper level. Sign up for a free consultation uh, and I'd be happy to talk to you about that and explain how to do that and maybe explore if you want to get your, your genetics tests tested to see if you should uh, avoid saturated fat or even check things like, you know, whether you're, you have amylase genes. Sometimes, you know, ha having certain amylase uh, genes means that you know potentially you can lose weight eating carbs but anyway that's topic of another video altogether
So I hope you understand these top five keto mistakes that I see. There are many other mistakes people make that I alluded to in this video, but to review them in general, you've never read a book, please go read a book. You assume protein and fat are the same. You gotta avoid, I, sh I should say, you gotta reduce the amount of animal protein that you're eating. It shortens your life. Relying on butter, cheese, and meat. Don't be one of those keto people that just eats butter, cheese, and meat. It is not good for you. Not good for you at all. Uh, thinking that saturated fat is perfectly fine. It's not for a significant number of people. And not understanding insulin and ketones. So those are my top five keto mistakes. Thank you so much for your attention. Love making these videos. Click that, that little bell to subscribe to my video so that you can see more. And I look forward to seeing you next time on the channel that focuses on making you your own authority in health. This is Dr. Karp. Have a great day.